Mecca's guides. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Mecca here, playing Abzu. Welcome to my 100% full game walkthrough. Following this video will get you all of the achievements or trophies in about an hour and a half. The game's a little bit disorienting because it takes place in water, so you can freely move in 3D, which makes it a little bit harder maybe to follow a guide. Uh, but we'll try to make it as uh, easy as possible here with commentary. And uh, I'll be pointing everything out as it happens, uh, especially during key moments of the game. And this is going to be my third time playing through the game. I played it originally when it came out on PlayStation, and I played it once uh, for the purposes of putting together this guide. And now I'm recording it as we go through. So the game starts. It's this underwater game. It, I, it's decent. I quite like it. Um, it's different. It's not amazing. It's not game of the year or anything, but... It's, it's worth experiencing, I guess. Very artistic. Controls are very simple. As soon as we get, get, ac uh, you know, get access to control our character, we're going to use the right trigger to dive down. And the A button to boost. As soon as you gain control, if you boost up to the surface, you'll do a leap. That's going to get you 50 gamer score for an achievement called Leap, for leaping out of the water, or Breach, rather. And then we'll swim towards the alcove area thing. And the game's actually going to be really linear, in my opinion. Um, there are open areas, which is where all the collectibles are. And there are quite a few of them, I would say around 50. But in general, the game itself is pretty linear. And during the really linear sections, it's hard to miss stuff. Uh, you can hold the left trigger to ride things. If you press the B button while riding something, you'll do a flip. Do a flip on this fish to get the ballet achievement or trophy out of the way. I already have those two, which is why you don't see them unlocking on screen. Now that we're in the first open area, if you swim forward and a little bit to your right, on the floor of the ocean, you should notice your first pool. These, This is what hidden pools look like. And you have to swim up to them and interact with X in order to activate them. Then we're going to swim up and a little bit back behind us to find uh, another pool here. This one's a little bit on higher ground towards one of the uh, light areas that's shining through the skylight. Activate this pool. And then if you continue forward to that light and look down somewhere around here near the ocean floor not far from that last pool you should find a third pool right there there's also going to be two more things in this area you'll notice that there's a meditation post you'll want to go up there and meditate there's uh, I think like 11 of these and you can press the view button to look through the fish and use your left stick to look through them and there's going to be an achievement here for finding one fish as it eats another so you kind of want to find a predatory fish and there you go you get lucky but if you find a predatory fish as it eats another fish you'll get the achievement for uh, food chain we can now exit our meditation post. And directly under us from the meditation post, we can find our first seashell. It's going to be on the ocean floor underneath us. Alright, so now we have everything in the area. We're just going to go through the story part, which is to find the three little... Um, submarine thingamabobs inside of the beams of light so you'll just swim up to them interact with them and they'll start following you i believe there's three of them
and two of them along the sides one on the left one on the right from where you entered and then uh the third one is near the exit which is like a giant red kind of seaweed wall that the meditation post faces Now when you swim towards this wall, they should be able to take care of it for you. If you didn't have all of them, it wouldn't let you pass through here. You'll notice the shark swim through the seaweed. Um, this means we're pretty close to our next seashell. Just follow along the linear path and stick low into the left. You'll notice the seashell hanging out there. And then continue forward. I believe there's like a two to three minute story section right now coming up. So I'll, uh, I'll be quiet for a minute. Alright, once we spawn here, there's a meditation post basically directly in front of us uh, that we'll want to go on top of. You can try the food chain here if you weren't successful doing it the first time. And then we can also like ride the fish that we want here, including like the manta ray. Um, but we don't need to do that. Alright, once we get to this section of, like, the deep water with the big great white shark, 
Um, instead of going to your objective in front of you, dive straight down to the ocean floor. Not far from the pillar in front of you, you should notice uh, your first pool. And then if you follow the ocean floor like forward and follow the uh, the rocks, the pillar rocks, you should notice a shell behind the third one in. And now you can dive up and complete the chapter. Starting off with chapter two here. As soon as you start, you're gonna go into a jet stream. Your entrance might have looked a tiny bit different from mine, but essentially what you wanna do during this jet stream is try to hit as many school of fish as possible. You can miss uh, quite a few of them, but just try your best to hit all of them if you can. Um, we're gonna be going through multiple jet streams, and I think throughout the entire game, we have to hit 15 of them. There's probably more than 20, so you don't really have to worry about missing them. So now we're in a different part of the ocean, meaning that some stuff looks a little different. Uh, to our left, about 90, to maybe 60 degrees to our left, we'll find a hidden pool. We're going to be going around uh, this area in a circle. So find the hidden pool. Right next to it, just a little bit off to the right-hand side, we can find a meditation area. Directly in front of the meditation stone, as we come off, we'll notice a large pillar, the tallest pillar in the area. At the top of that pillar, we can find a seashell. And then from where we entered, if we had gone directly forward um, to the opposite side, that's where our objective is, in a little cave. But before we go into the cave, there's a meditation pool basically above our objective on top of this little plateau. It can be a little bit hard to spot, but it's right here just on top of the cave. It blends in really well, actually. This one's one of the harder ones to see, to be honest.
And we can now open the little, um, like, seaweed-blocked door that we might have seen when we first entered the area. It's going to be underneath the little uh, arch of rock right here. All right, we're going to dive in. And this begins our second slipstream. Pay very close attention. We're going to be going for the schools of fish. But about halfway through, we're going to stick to the left and pick up a seashell. You can only pick it up during this section, which means uh, you got to make sure you grab it or else you got to come back and do this whole chapter again. And then up and to the left. You'll notice it right there. Make sure you're tapping the button in order to grab it. And we also unlocked our jet stream achievement for busting, uh, bursting 15 school of fish. Um, there was more than 15. I think there's going to be more jet streams later on in the game to get this. So you don't really have to worry too, too much. Once we spawn into this area after the little cutscene, we can find a meditation area a little bit to the left. Um, this time it's going to be at the same sea level as how we spawned. Uh, last time it was in a completely different area, so this, this area might seem familiar, but it's actually a different area. And now we can proceed.
So once we're in this area, you'll see the gigantic school of fish directly in front of us. Dive down and forward. You should be able to see it if your uh, like your colors are right in your TV. Uh, but off in the distance below that school of fish is a meditation post. So go interact with that. And then get off of the meditation post and dive directly down from the direction it makes you go. And follow the rock that, um, you know, the, the rock structure straight down to the, all the way to the floor. And if you followed it properly, you should notice a hidden pool directly in front of you. So interact with that. It, it shines in the dark, so it's pretty easy to see. And then turn kind of like 90 degrees to your left. Essentially, if you just follow around the rock that we just descended upon. And follow along kind of right beside it here. If you circle around it, you should notice a seashell. I ended up swimming almost completely around the rock, but I like to use that rock as a reference point. It's a lot easier to find the shell. So now we have that pool, the shell, the meditating post in this area, and we're good to go. Swim back up and towards the exit. And that's the end of chapter two. Uh, the beginning of chapter three might look a little different on my end than your end because every time I finish a chapter, I kind of go back to the main menu, uh, reflect on my notes and whatnot. So there's this like small section of editing that's going to happen right now. Okay, so the beginning of chapter three. Swim forward and find your objective on the left as you enter the large area. Uh, from this objective, you should be able to clearly spot the hidden pool to your slight right. Behind yourself, after getting off the meditation, meditation statue, there's a well. Dive deep down inside in order to find a shell. As you come out, you're going to want to swim basically across the, the gap area. And you should be able to find a hidden pool if you keep an eye out for it. It's going to be a little bit off to the side. directly down to the center of the area in the bottom middle to find your next objective. And if you look around 360 from your objective, you should notice a hidden pool on the seafloor as well.
Next, all you'll need to do is complete your objective, which is to open the door, uh, and you'll see there's like two chains that are blocking it. Let me get Ori and let me figure out exactly where I am in here. So there's the, the door. Um, this is one of the doors we'll need to where the... You're trying to go to the sources of the chains. I'm overcomplicating this. It's really not that that bad. Um, so this is one of the chains. And this is going to help open the main door. Now we have to find the other chain. The other chain's kind of broken into two pieces, though. So, the simple way to do it, whenever this little cinematic thing ends, is to come out of here, go forward towards the shining light, a little bit up and to the left. There's a cave, but we're going to pass that cave for now, the first cave on our left here. And instead, we're gonna go there to a to a a deeper, shallower cave. The cave's shallower, but it's on a deeper depth. Uh, sorry. That'll open the the door for you. What you'll want to do is wait for the shark to leave. I don't know if he can do anything to you, but let's not try. You notice the rocks and the seaweed kind of where they meet? Uh, swim behind there. And you should notice a seashell. Between the rocks and the wall and the seaweed. And then continue forward.
All right, so you might have noticed a little bit of a pattern. We kind of keep doing, like, every chapter kind of has the same structure to it. One large open area with a puzzle, story, then another large area. So once we spawn in here, uh, there will be a meditation post. It's going to be pretty high up, so we got to spot it and then swim to it. It'll be kind of across from where you spawn. So interact with that. And then if you come off of it and turn 90 degrees to your right hand side, you'll notice some pillars that kind of line the top of the gate. You want to swim behind them to notice a seashell. And that's it for this area. So now we can continue forward by going through the gate. As you approach this door here in front of us, there's a meditation post to the right. We can't, oh, we can't interact with it. The first time I tried it wouldn't let me. So interact with the meditation post. You can interact with it after you interact with the item directly in front of us though. So don't worry if, you know, you do it a, that, that specific part out of order. Um, so you can activate the well and uh, go on the meditation post again if you want to make sure. And that more or less is the end of chapter three. Alright, so for chapter 4, we continue forward and the first two minutes or so is basically all story related. All right, so after the humongous whale does a couple of barrel rolls, we will be 
put into the deep ocean. And we can begin. So, there's these little mines you'll see in front of you. Just don't hit them, please. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's the whole, that's the new mechanic, is these flashing mines in front of us. As we spawn, you should notice a hidden pool directly in front of you. Why am I swimming so slowly? There we go. So pick up the hidden pool directly in front of you. And I can't follow my own advice and got stunned, unfortunately. Alright, hidden pool number one right there. You can use a lot of the skeletons on the ground as really good identifiers. So we're going to turn left and go up above the little tunnel with the rib cage to find the meditation spot. If you look about 90 degrees to your left from the meditation spot, you should notice a large, tall rock with the outlines of a rib cage on it. We're going to swim up to that next. And inside of there, you should be able to find your uh, seashell. If we go forward off this large rock and dive straight down, you should be able to notice a skeleton. Oh god, the controls are going to kill me. And at the end of the skeleton, you should notice another hidden pool. This is basically going to be directly under the shell we just grabbed. And then from where we entered, where this hidden pool is, there's one mirrored on the other side. So directly in front of us, that's our objective if we were to follow the, the wires or whatever. So if we follow along, just follow the skeleton ribcage thing. And you should notice um, another hidden pool alongside of the ground here near our objective. So hopefully that makes sense. The area is a little bit complicated, but there's three hidden pools on the seashell on the uh, sea floor. There's the meditation near the first one. Hopefully we don't get stunned here. And then on to our objective. And there's also the seashell. And we activate the objective. That's one of our objectives. All right, and from here, we're just going to follow the cable and activate the second cable. The best way to find the second cable is to follow the one we just activated. You'll notice it in front of you here, the second one that is. Let's try to not get stunned. Even if we get stunned, it's all right. It's not really a big deal. And that'll open the door for us. If you notice a giant squid, you can ride it in this chapter, but if we don't find it, that's fine. We can ride it in chapter 7. That's just an optional thing you can grab when you're here. Try to be better at video games than I am, clearly.
All right, go forward and look up and to the right to spot a seashell. Continue forward into the big void and then dive straight down. Now, from this meditation spot, you're going to swim forward and directly up, but not towards the objective. Swim to the very top of the large opening in the side. You'll see a rock sticking out. And on top of that rock, there is a hidden pool. Now, unfortunately, I'm unlocking my achievement here, but you won't be. I made a small editing error, and that's why it's going to pop on screen, but it won't be popping for you until much later on in the game. And we can try to find a giant squid, but we don't... Uh, is that a giant squid? Let's just go and try to grab it out of the way. So we can uh, not have to worry about it later. If you find the giant squid, grab onto it. I'm literally... There we go. So you got the giant squid out of the way. And uh, there's a blue whale, which we'll need later on to make it jump out of the water. But we can't do it during this section. So now just continue on with the story. At this point, you just uh, swim through the door and basically end the chapter. There's also another giant squid here you can ride if you need to. Alright, that's the end of chapter 4. Now we have chapter 5, which is story related, only lasts about 4 or 5 minutes, and doesn't have any missables or collectibles or achievements or anything along the way. Uh, basically just swim through the chapter.
And that's basically the end of chapter five. So uh, yeah, that was chapter five and moving on to chapter six in a second here. All right, so now we're going to start chapter six. It's definitely one of the longer chapters in the game in terms of time, clocking in around 15 to 18 minutes, depending on how fast you are. Uh, all the chapters up to this point have been around the 11 to 12 minute mark. Uh, there are only nine collectibles in this chapter, though, instead of the usual 10 we've been going for this entire time. Uh, and there is a decent amount of story. It also has one of the longer puzzles in the game required for you to continue. Um, so we're just going to continue forward for the next two minutes or so until we get into an open area. Alright, so as we dive in, go to the ocean floor and continue forward, basically in the direction you tra you came in. Uh, you should notice a pretty obvious uh, hidden pool directly in front of you if you stay along the middle of your area. bit off to your right hand side get on the meditation post facing forward from the meditation post a little bit off to your right hand side you should notice another hidden pool go pick it up from this hidden pool swim directly up to the top of the post in front of you And then get out of the water. You can get out of the water a little bit closer to that waterfall in front of us if you want to save like 5-10 seconds. But you're going to run forward through the waterfall. And you'll find a secret pool here which you'll dive into. You should notice a seashell at the end of this secret pool. Uh, the seashell that we're going to go for is actually visible on screen just above my character's head. So we're going to dive in. Essentially go forward and a little bit off to your left.
you'll notice that there's this area with stairs that we can get out of the water at. So climb those stairs. The controls start getting a little bit iffy when you start coming in and out of water a lot, so keep that in mind. But as we come out and go directly up these stairs, you notice the seashell in front of us. Obviously pick it up. And then I believe we can do a little bit of um, puzzle solving until the next couple um, collectibles a little bit later on in the mission or the chapter. Alright, so now I'm going to spend the next uh, three or four minutes solving puzzles and I'll rejoin you back uh, in a little bit. In order to solve the puzzles, you will pull both of the chains to open the door, obviously. All right, at this point we're diving back into the water and there's gonna be four collectibles in the body of water below us, two of them being our last one. So this is gonna be our last hidden pool and our last meditation post. As we dive in below us, a little bit to the left behind us, there'll be a hidden pool. So go grab that. Now we're gonna quickly grab the objective that's near us just to save time since we're already here. Uh, so there's two pools that connect to the middle. Um, the one closest to us I just activated.
if you follow the water line you should notice on the other side of the puzzle there's a hidden pool just off to the right hand side activating this will be your last hidden pool because of the way I edited this my achievement is not showing up on screen but this should be your 20th hidden pool if you swim a little bit up and then cross over to the other side of that water line I was talking about you'll see your last meditation statue number 12 because I edited it properly, it did unlock on screen for me. So that's all 20 hidden pools and all 12 meditation statues taken care of. Now before we activate the water line, we're going to swim back kind of across. And you'll notice that there's some large seaweed right in front of a gate. So we're going to swim through that. Swim up. And then there's this little secret shallow area. And then if you try to climb the wall near the shallow area you'll be able to get out you'll find a small kind of gazebo and inside that is your seashell there are three more seashells in the last chapter of the game so we won't be unlocking our seas our seashell achievement just yet now we're going to continue on with the puzzles of the game and complete the chapter until we get into the last chapter of the game I believe the meditation statue was called Zen Master and the Hidden Pools achievement was called Ecosystem. Don't quote me on that though, uh, they should have popped on your screen and uh, you should have been rewarded justly. So we filled up both the pools and now it's just a lot of progression until the end of the chapter, which is another four or five minutes. I won't be talking during those four or five minutes, just follow along with the puzzles and the quite linear path.
And that's the end of chapter six. Uh, you would have also had an opportunity to unlock your jet stream achievement if you didn't already have it. Um, and all we have left is chapter seven, which has a couple of missable achievements for doing miscellaneous tasks, as well as three collectibles. All right, chapter seven, the last chapter of the game. It's about 10, 11 minutes long. We'll be grabbing four total shells. I said three earlier in the guide. There's actually four. There's three in the game and then one in the credits. Then we'll also be getting three miscellaneous achievements. One of them is not missable. You have to do it. And then two of them are definitely kind of missable. I'll explain as we go along. Uh, there's a little bit of story here to begin with, though. As we plop in the water, turn 90 degrees to your right. You'll notice a little ridge sticking out the side of the wall. Um, so I screwed that completely up. But if you just uh, swim right over, you don't even need to leap out of the water. If you swim right here, you can pick up the seashell above my head. And you'll need to pick that up. Now we'll dive down and we're going to interact with the great white shark and uh, ride it in order to progress the story but also unlock the achievement for connection which is for interacting with the great white shark and i think you have to do this because you need him in order to complete the game from now on uh, for about five minutes all we'll be doing is destroying these bombs in order to raise the water level so that we can get to the next area and the next area and the next area we're doing this for about four or five minutes and then i'll rejoin you back with commentary
Alright, we're in the final area of the game. We have a couple of things to do before we go to that exit. So we entered from like there. From where we entered, look to like 90 degrees to your right, okay? And you'll see this ridge sticking out. You need to dive up and out of the water near this ridge to pick up that collectible that I just picked up. It was a little bit hard to see, but there's a collectible on top of this ridge. You'll need to grab it in midair. Again, it's going to be right there where I just jumped by. All right, so now we're going to go back to that door we came through, except this time we're going to go to the opposite side. And you'll see if you jump out of the water that there's a floating polar ice cap. We're going to go onto that ice cap for the Discover a Polar Region achievement or trophy. As well as the one for... We're going to need the shell on here anyways. I think the shell is what actually triggers the achievement or trophy to unlock for Polar That's how you get that. <laughs> Dive back into the water. And before we end the game, find a gigantic whale in this open water. Not the shark, but the giant whale. There's going to be more than one, but let's just find one right there. And then hold on to it until it jumps out of the water. Uh, you, you, oh, oh, nope, that one was a little early for us. Um, so let's just find another one. Alright, so this is a blue whale. We need to, uh, be holding on to a blue whale as it breaches the water. There we go. Bleep bloop. Arctic Explorer. Discover the polar region. That's the one for the collectible. That just unlocked now, and then we got the double pop for Leviathan, which was for using the blue whale to breach. Awesome. So, it ended up fixing itself. Thank God for Xbox Live. And we can go on to complete the game. There's about two minutes of cutscenes, and then there's the credits. But, during the credits, there is a collectible. Pay very close attention. I'll be using my voice, obviously, in order to, uh, you know, warn you of exactly where we're looking and what we're doing. Uh, but there is a collectible near the very beginning of the... There's a collectible near the very beginning of the credits. And we need to pick it up. That's going to be our final collectible. I think that's seashell number 19. Um, so there's 20 hidden pools, 19 seashells, and 12 meditations. If my super quick math is right, that's 51 collectibles total in this game. All were obviously shown in the video. And as soon as we beat the game, um, we'll pick up the shell, which will unlock the achievement for the shell. And we'll also unlock the achievement for completing the game, called, I think, Exploration. And as soon as both of those are unlocked, the game's completely done and we have our 1,000. All right, so the credits are starting. You see the term Abzu show up. Then you see created by Giant Squid. You see creative director. Lead engineer. Studio manager. Graphics engineer. I'm gonna be... And now that we see technical artist Dimitri, we can swim over to the collectible in the bottom right hand corner, grab it, love it, cherish it. That's going to be your final collectible.
And just like that, you guys should have 1,000 out of 1,000 or 12 out of 12 achievements or trophies. And you should have Abzu completely completed with all of the collectibles and missable stuff. Now, if you did miss something, it's okay. Once you beat the game and get back into the main menu, you do have a chapter select that wasn't here before. So if you missed one of the squids in chapter 4 or a hidden pool in chapter 2 or even the blue whale in chapter 7, you can go back and do those now. You can even do the jet streams if you miss those. So uh, you can even replay the whole game if you, if you so desire and you're not sure what you missed. That might help you out. And that's that guys, thank you guys so much for watching the 100% achievement and trophy walkthrough of Abzu showing you all 51 collectibles and everything else you may or may not need. A like on the video would be greatly appreciated and sharing it with a friend would be even more appreciated. Uh, special thanks to Drop the Artemis for being an outstanding member and supporting the show on Patreon. Hopefully I see you guys next time. Peace.